Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jacob Bennett with Bulldog Analytics and today I want to discuss the column from examples option when you're adding a custom column in Power Query. Now there's a few different options or different ways to add custom columns deriving data from existing uh, columns in Power Query, but this is kind of an easy shortcut, uh, especially if you're not super comfortable writing in the M language or maybe you're just in a lazy mood and you want to have a quick shortcut that allows uh, the system to automate some of the results for you. Uh, Essentially what this feature does is it allows you to first define the columns that you want to derive your new column data from and then you can just write some examples of how you want the output to look for one or multiple columns and then it takes that output it runs some intelligence behind the scene and then Power Query essentially tries to guess what you're getting at which transformation step you're trying to apply and then it'll autofill the rest of your column results as well as write an M code that is visible up at the top you can kind of go up and look and comb through to make sure it's doing what you want it to do. All right, let's go ahead and jump over to my screen and run through an example, but I just want to say up front that I'm confident if you do work in Power Query after you see this demo in action that this will become a feature or function in Power Query that you lean on often. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. All right, guys, as you can see on my screen, I've opened up Power Query and I'm using an example file called Dunder Mifflin Sales Dataset. I use this in some of my other training videos as well. But we're going to go through three examples here. So the first one I want to do is on this order details query. As you can see, we've got some order details information. What I essentially want to do is create a sales order number. So have the prefix SO and then I want to have the order number with a period followed by the line number. Now I could go in and I could write some encode to um, accomplish this, but instead I want to use this column from examples option, which if you click over to the add columns option at the top, you'll see it's the first option there. So I'm going to go ahead and just click this. And what it does is it essentially allows you to check the columns in your existing data that you want to use in the intelligence that Power Query basically um, uses to define where the data is coming from. So I want it to come only from the order number and the line number here. So I'm going to uncheck these other options. Uh, you also are able to, if I go ahead and pre-select those and drop this down, I can say from selection here and it will automatically just check those two. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click on the column name and title this uh, sales order ID. And then below that I can basically type what I want it to output. So I'm going to say SO10248.4. Click enter and it automatically fills all the way down. And as you can see up here it gives me the transformation that it's doing. So it's going to do a text combine with that constant SO as the prefix and then it's going to say text from order number first so that's going to be this piece and then it's going to put a period after that and then text from line number. Now this text from is basically a conversion to format it as a text which this is required in this instance because we have that prefix of SO so that's perfectly okay and as expected but this actually looks pretty good to me so this is a very straightforward example of how you could leverage this column from examples feature. I'm going to click OK and now we've got it in our data. Alright now I'm going to jump down to my regions table here and we're going to run through another example. So here I'm going to select this column right here and it's titled name but what it really is is the city state and I'd like to be able to break this up and have a city column and a state column instead of how it's combined right now so if I come up to the column from examples I'm going to click from selection over here I'm going to title this city now when we were on the order details tab when I double clicked it actually gives some suggestions of potential uh, outputs of what it could present in this new column and it says here like Scranton PA it's just the name or maybe you've got the length of uh, characters in the name I'm not going to use these right now but I just wanted to point that out if you do indeed double click on that uh, column there so let's go ahead and type Scranton and click enter now as you can see Scranton PA in that one row doesn't have a comma so when you look at the results here it gets a little bit confusing because it returns Scranton based on the first value before delimiter but then before the space delimiter in the other results it has that comma at least for most of them so 
I'm going to click on the next line and actually define what I want that to look like and click enter. Now as you can see it starts to get a little bit confusing here so I'm going to click Camden and as you can see that honestly complicates it even more and it's not necessarily a limitation as much as I've actually kind of started with inconsistent data here you know some results have a comma and a space whereas others uh, have just a comma or just a space and then even on this line for example it just says New York corporate so you need to be aware of some of these obvious limitations obviously Power Query expects some consistency in the data so in this instance we lack that consistency and so it's going to start assuming some things up here in the M code that it doesn't need to assume. So in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and click cancel just because it's not a great example. And I'm going to apply a filter and we're going to exclude all of the oddballs here. So that New York corporate option, as well as Scranton PA, we're going to click OK. And we're going to assume that uh, we're presented with some clean data before we go this column from examples route. So now let's start over. From selection, I'm going to say city, Utica, and now as you can see, it populates it all the way down. And we can also select this column from examples from selection. We can also populate the state very easily. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, so let's jump down now, lastly, to employees, and we'll do one more example. So in this page or this query here, you can see that we've got a last name and a first name, as well as a middle name, but we don't have kind of a combination of all three throughout here. And oftentimes when I'm working with employee data or customer uh, contact data, something like that, we like to present one column where it has the last name, comma, first name, space, middle name, or initial. So I'm actually going to go that middle initial route and see if it's smart enough to just pull that first digit from the middle name. So let's see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and select last name, first name, middle name, drop down on columns from examples and click from selection. All right, over here, I'm just going to call this name. And then here I'm going to say Mifflin comma Robert enter and as you can see it automatically populates now these first several lines as well as several other lines throughout the data here excludes any middle name data but we have a few that do have middle name data so on this Andrew Bernard option I'm going to double click in there and I'm going to say B now it doesn't look like it's smart enough to recognize that you could come in and edit the M code in advanced query but what if I change that B to the full middle name as you can see it's still a little bit confused as to what it's trying to accomplish if I cancel this and then maybe we sort middle name in ascending order excuse me descending order then we select last name first name middle name and select our column from examples from selection. Now let's attempt to do this with the full name, Lewis, comma, Gabriel, space, Susan. And now as you can see, because it has that data grouped up there at the top, it kind of knows what it's getting at. If I were to come in and delete out everything but the middle initial, you can see that it thinks that I'm just trying to include a constant S in there. So that's not what we want to do. So I'm going to go in and click enter on the whole middle name. I'm going to come up here again and rename the column and click OK. Now say we hadn't sorted the rows like that. Maybe I delete these last two steps. I come back over here, select my name columns, and instead of doing it on that first result, let's say I go ahead and jump down to the first line 20 here with Andrew Baines Bernard as the first result with a middle name included, and we will go ahead and type out how I want it to return. Bernard, let's make sure I spell it right, Andrew Baines, enter. And now as you can see, it looks as though it's returning as I want and it auto fills up and down as you can see up here in the M code it's doing a text combine on last name comma first name space middle name so I'm gonna go ahead and click well let's rename this to I'll say full name and then let's click OK alright so now as you can see we've got that full name column in our data 
although at the beginning of this example, I said that I wanted to do last name, comma, first space, middle initial. Now, the column from examples uh, engine there wasn't smart enough to figure that one out, but now that we've got a good starting place, you can actually come over to the home menu, hop into the advanced editor, and you know you can leverage Google to look up exactly um, which function you need to use here, but you can actually just come in and edit. So I want to do text start open parentheses, come over to the end of middle name. I just want to return the first value close parentheses and we'll click OK. And now as you can see for any items that do have a middle name and we can go ahead and filter down to just values with a middle name, it's returning just the middle name initial which is how I wanted to do it at the beginning. So even though the column from examples didn't get us the full way there, we were able to quickly write it using the column from examples and then apply a quick edit to the advanced editor for the M uh, code and get the output that we desire. All right, guys, that's all I've got today for this quick Power BI tip and trick specific to Power Query when we're trying to add a custom column that's driving data from uh, columns that already exist in your queries. So I hope that you can use this in your transformation steps going forward and that you find it a very efficient way to automate some M code or just kind of create efficiency in your workflow. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave some comments below, and I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks.